All right, we have some transfer news. We are at the transfer deadline, about 14 hours left before the midnight closure. So we'll just kind of hit these as they're going through. We'll take a look at some deals that we've made. Uh, this is a uh, an attacking fullback. He's going to be a left back. Cameron Prang, 23 years old, and he will be coming aboard um, right away. Uh, 96000 a year. He's going to be a fringe player this year. I am going to accept that. Taking a look at him, we're bringing him on for a reason. He will be our starting left back next year, 23 years old. And uh, we're saying he's got two and a half uh, potential, uh, current and four star potential. But um, the three guys that we have in front of him right now on the depth chart are... Um, are all loan players and all of their loans uh, end at the end of this season. So definitely a position that we needed to address. So I saw this guy, uh, good value, I think. So we'll pick him up. Uh, very good physicals. And if we look at him as a wing back on attack, uh, you can see the important categories. He's basically double digits in everything uh, outside of a few of his mentals which at this level of the game in League One, not a surprise. He can pass well, tackle, very good physicals. So I project him to be our starter next year. And, uh, you know, he's playing for Bristol City's under 23s currently, and uh, he'll be coming on board with us. Uh, we paid, what did we pay? I forget. Oh, there we go, $43,000 and uh, out of pocket. Uh, so we've accepted that. Uh, Adam Hutchinson is a young center back. We've uh, bought him for uh, end of contract, and he'll be getting $30,000. Uh, we're not pulling out anything outside of his, uh, I think that's the loyalty or whatever, the uh, $120. It's next to nothing to get him. We got him on a free uh, end of contract, so we'll accept that. He's going to go into our under-23s. And again, center back, uh, always looking to add value there. And uh, he is considered to be very, very good. Uh, comes in valued at $2,600 from uh, who's that? Dundee United. And you can see he's going to have very good pace, acceleration, uh, heading, tackling, marking, all his defensive skills. Six foot two. Jumping reach could be a concern. I didn't have him fully scouted, um, but I think he's going to be all right. So he's coming on board. And then uh, Leon Pittman. Uh, we had to sign him as a uh, goalkeeper. He's going to be coming in right away. Uh, we brought up one of our U23 guys that is 23 years old, but this guy was an upgrade on him. And I thought was better as a future prospect for our backup keeper. So fifteen thousand dollars to sign him, twelve thousand two hundred and fifty dollars a year, and uh, he is pretty solid, pretty solid, and uh, low eccentricity. So I like that. So he comes to us from um, Portsmouth, Portsmouth under twenty threes. So he's coming on board. Uh, let's see, Harvey White. Second in player of the month. I finished second in that. Let's take a look at some other transfers that have already happened. Uh, Adam Smith. This is the reason we went out and signed that uh, goalkeeper. Uh, Everton signs our backup keeper. Maybe he shouldn't have been our backup keeper if Everton signed him. Or Everton's just really desperate. Uh, because he is 28. He's not going into the first, uh, into the reserves. So weird and he signs a $583,000 deal. I think I got ripped off. But they came in they they ordered, they made an offer and another league one side made an offer um at at his value. I rejected them. Put it up near $100,000, nobody came back. I dialed it back two or three times, Everton wouldn't go in and uh finally got him at 43 back down all the way to 43 and uh but he was making 161,000 a year with us so that takes a big chunk of salary off the books uh he's not bad 
I mean, he's not bad, but I think our other goalkeeper is just better. And he was 28 and making a lot, you know, a lot more money than I could afford to pay a reserve keeper. Uh, Emil Kalsas, we brought him in on loan. Uh, I think we looked at him last episode, but he is our current left back. Uh, he will be on loan through the end of the season. Again, three guys at that position on loan and all of them will be leaving. So that's why we signed the other youngster. Now, if we look at the transfer window, uh, let's see. We looked at him. We looked at him. Looked at him. Uh, this is an outgoing, maybe? No, this is an ingoing. Uh, this guy is, no, he's going to lose it. Yeah, he's leaving us going to Luzan. Uh, midfielder. Guess we didn't have him under contract. Oh, I know what it was. He only had two-star potential, and now he's showing four. Don't know what the deal is there. but uh, we So we let him go. He was way down the depth chart. And we are looking at one more youngster, uh, Isaiah Jones. He is not confirmed yet, but uh, again... Uh, and he will be leaving us to join another club. And similar situation, very low potential. So they were in a group of youngsters that I was letting go. All right, well, if anything else happens here at the transfer deadline, uh, we'll let you know. Uh, Pring gets a B-, uh, Hutchinson and for, uh, Pittman are uh, confirmed. Pittman, we get a C+. Plus. So we'll be back here in a minute if there's any more news. All right, so here's the wrap-up. We've re reached the transfer deadline. We were the most active team in League One, bringing in three players, uh, nothing big money-wise. Although we were on the verge of a big money deal, uh, Man City paid $132 million for Bettencourt, uh, $53 million for Polgar from Arsenal. Brighton spent $44.5 million on Samada, a striker. Man City, that was all on one deal. And Cambridge under 23s in Division Four signed five players. Uh, the big move for us was going to be Farrand Rawson. So he's valued at 425,000. Uh, we've signed him to a new deal, so he is signed for two more years uh, at 164,000 a year. 27 starts this year. He has been outstanding. Uh, very solid defender for us. And we got an offer, and I forget who it was from, but it was somebody in uh, in League One. So we can look it up and figure it out because I'll, I'll remember if I see it. But um, they made an offer at 425, and I actually countered, and it was somewhere... Don't hold me to this, but it was close, like eight hundred and twenty-five thousand plus, like a twenty percent sell-on fee, uh, and they accepted it, and I accepted that. So I was start, you know, I said, okay, well, if I sell him, I've got to replace him. I don't have enough depth at center back. Uh, Jones, by the way asked to be pulled off the transfer list. He had been wanting to be moved, but he said, uh, never mind. But I started looking, and there was nobody that was interested in a transfer that I could afford that was similar quality. And I was looking to try to reinvest the uh, you know you know four five six hundred thousand potentially if I needed to, but couldn't find anybody, so I ended up canceling that deal. It would have been nice to have gotten the million dollars because you know you know almost a million bucks. Because it would have put us back in the in the black, but you can see uh, we we actually made uh, we made profit this month, this past month. Uh, so it really cut into this is January, uh, February. But in January we actually made profit for the first time. Uh, what is that for? So about eighty thousand dollars. So getting rid of that high priced reserve keeper that helped us out. Uh, a couple of other moves helped us out. But that was it as far as transfers go. Um, we do have the guys joining us at the end of the season, but those are those are guys that are going to go into our youth team and, and 
be down the road. Uh, we were accused of uh, Pring, what, Pring, not Pring, uh, Pittman. Pittman being a, a desperation signing. Well, he's only 20, so he's going to get a little bit better. He's three and a half star potential, three star prospect rating. And the guy that we called up to our senior squad is 20, 23 years old, Lewis Thomas. And he's not bad either, and he's three and a half star yeah. potential. So at some point, he might be good enough to step into the number one role and we can get rid of O'Malley or we keep O'Malley and, and sell Thomas. But they're very similar ratings, just need a little development. So I felt he was good enough to come up and be our reserve. O'Malley was starting for us anyway. So that all helps. And taking a look, we did uh, extend some contracts. So there's a quick look. So Harvey White up. Those are the guys expiring at the end of the year. Uh, Talbro, I think think I'm going to let go. I might not, but we'll, you know, we'll, we'll revisit that. Uh, Galbraith, I don't want him going anywhere. Yeah, he can pass. Let's go ahead and give him a new contract. Breakthrough prospect. And don't want to give him a raise. Let's go ahead and get him for two years. And can I get him at 48? No. 50 and get rid of that all right he'll take that so uh he's good coble's gonna be gone uh, i just don't think he's good enough even at 17 he's way down the list and hasn't played he was on the transfer list loan list nobody was interested josh marsh uh 23 years old again he's got some upside but i just don't think he's gonna ever develop into anything i would have liked to have sold him but nobody was interested even in loan and then all of our loan players they're going to be gone so uh we, we've kind of run into a log jam because we can only have i think five loan players in the match day squad so we've got we've got guys sitting on the bench uh that would normally play or be on the bench for us uh so me signing that last guy calls us uh, didn't really help us any, and I, I that was an oversight on my part. But anyway, that's it for the transfers, so let's get back for the match uh, against Rotherham. I guess we can run through this. Who did we play? Petersboro and Accrington? No. Yeah, that's who we played. So a 2-0 win over Wickham. Uh, Aaron Collins with a brace. 3-0 uh, defeat to Petersboro in the FA Cup third round. Ivan Tony, I've had him on a team before, a pretty good striker. Uh, Gillingham, a 0-0 draw. Charlton beat us 2-1. Liam Kitching scored late uh, in that one to but to equalize, but then uh, Chooks and uh scored in stoppage time. Wimbledon, we got a 1-0 win. Ethan Galbraith, uh, Lincoln, a 2-2 draw. We had goals from White and Hunter. Uh, we did give up an 88th minute equalizer as our defense failed us. And then a 1-0 win over the aforementioned Charlton. Aaron Collins with the win, and that is in league action. So cost us a little money here. Got us some points here. So Rotherham and Ipswich later today in this episode. And we are still top of the table by eight points. So looking good heading into the second half of the season. So let me get up to the games. Yeah, quick shout out here. Uh, let's see, I need to I need to pull up my, my notes, my notifications. Uh, Kobe Hawthorne, welcome to the channel. I, I, I noticed I lost two or three subscribers last week and then got one or two back. Uh, but I only think one, I think Toby was the only one that showed up as a notification so that looks like the only one for the last couple of weeks so welcome to the channel and thank you very much uh one of the guys uh the autistic kid i know he's a leeds fan one more week man one more week from today so when you see this it might only be a couple of days away and we will see leeds taking on liverpool at infield i can't wait i know it's probably going to be brutal but i can't wait so, uh, he had, he asked if I had ever gotten a, uh, a, a kid in the game 
And to my knowledge, I have not. Um, if you guys know for sure how is that uh, Matt Mills, our old player? It is, and he is available. But he was making a shit ton of money. Wasn't he making like $216,000 a year? Doesn't like me. Oh, well. Um, focus, man, focus. Uh, but he was asking about uh, that you can get a, your coach, your manager can get a child in the game. Uh, I don't know that I've ever had that happen, but I would assume, we know what happens when you assume things, but I would assume you would get an email notification on that, that you had a son or something. Maybe you don't. If you know for sure, let me know in the comments. But I don't, this is just jobs. So I don't see, I don't see anything. I don't even know where to look for that. So I've never paid attention if I have or have not gotten anything. Oh, by the way, there's my ratings uh, as a coach. I have no idea how these improve or don't improve. Uh, no clue. I'm assuming you have to win. We went through this with one of my managers earlier in FM20 and uh, the one where I had simmed ahead for the 30 seasons or whatever. And... Uh, then he turned out to be like a hundred years old and even winning never got a reputation bump. So, you know, but I don't know what causes your coaching skills to improve. You know, I don't know what the, what the mathematical equation is, but Oh, relationships. No, that's the same one. So yeah, I don't, I don't see anything about a son in there. So, and uh, to, you know, and I don't save scum. So, you know, if you have to save scum to get a son, not happening. But uh, anyway, so quick look. We're still top of the table by eight points over Rothram, who we are playing today. So let's get to that. Uh, we have only played them once, and we have lost. We are favored today. Uh, but So I'm going to go positive. Kalsas is new at left back, so we've lost that hook up there. But... That's okay. That is all right. If I put him to attacking, that helps up here. And if I drop him to support. All right, we do have um, one player out, and that is due to Koval being injured. Koval is the one player that has the homegrown at club, and you've got to have one of those. That was why we kept getting that notification of a missing slot last year, and now we're getting it again. Uh, so he wasn't playing anyway. He's only 17, but uh, it was nice not to get the little pop-up. Uh, Liam Kitching will be starting. He's been complaining about not enough playing time. Uh, the guy in front of him is injured, so he's going to get a little bit of game time, at least here in the short term. Get creative. Freer, near post. I did watch the uh, the Leeds United game today. Oh, and there we go. Aaron Collins picks up number 23. Elliot Freer with the assist. That was a nice goal to go up 1-0 in the third minute. Fighting for that ball. Uh, Leeds, uh, not Leeds, um, Calvin Phillips uh, did not play today. Didn't expect him to. It would have been nice, but uh, definitely looking forward to him getting his first cap for England, possibly next week. Uh, we'll see. We will see. But uh, England pulled that out uh, with that late penalty, right? And, uh, oof. It's nice to see that uh, that England fans are just as maniacal as uh, Leeds fans at the end of the day. Uh, they were screaming and ranting and raving and, wow. Wow. <laughs> Collins with a nice first touch into the box. Nobody there supporting. We had a couple of guys. Number 43 was Kennedy. I thought that was Klitsch running in from the midfield spot. Klitsch plays uh, is number 43 for Leeds. Uh, demand more. Kitching is pressured. Come on, if you want to be in the starting 11, I don't need you to puss out like that. Uh, go out and prove a point. Call sauce. 
Uh, and I did, uh, you should be seeing the full screen again. Uh, not on the, uh, not between highlights, but uh, just the actual whole screen here. Uh, I tried to resize some things. What's weird is my new computer has such a higher, the video card has such a higher resolution available. Um, everything is so small, I can't see it. So I have to, I put it there and then I blow everything up to like 200% just so I can see it with my old eyes. And, uh, <laughs> and then you can't, then, you know, everything else is, uh, you know, everything else gets resized too. And, and I missed it. Oh, there's a shot and a rebound and Elliot Freer picks up his eighth goal of the season. Harvey White with the first shot that got deflected by a defender. Freer with the volley off of that gets the goal, and we are up 2-0 here in the early parts of the second half. We'll give him a little bit of praise here moving forward. All right, let's go ahead and uh, pull Kalsis off. We'll move Kitching to the outside. Well, no, we won't. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and put Talbro in over there. He can play that right. He can play right back. So I'm assuming he can play left back too. Can't be that difficult. Um, Collins, Williams. Let's go ahead and put Hunter in. We'll drop Collins back to the number 10. Shepard into the box. Collins! Oh, that should have been a goal. Off the up bar. Demand more. All right, McGee plays it out. Gronley, not a good touch on the ball there by our right winger. They are carving us open here a little bit late. All right, there's a save by O'Malley. Sets up a corner. We are on the defensive here. And the header at the back post, Jamie Lindsay, his sixth of the season. Um, show some passion. Disappointing there. We come right back with a kickoff highlight. That could be good or bad. A quick answer would be nice. Or we could flub it and uh, give up the equalizer here. Shepard on the right wing and loses it. Yep, that's not what I wanted to see. Poked away. Good defense. Saved a counterattack there. Oh, there's Pilge. Up, up into... Oh, man. All right. Hunter with an opportunity. And what do we want to do? You know, we have not seen Ibu Adams here in a while. Let's, uh, let's bring him on for Pilge. I mean, he was a starter for us at one point in time. All right, 85 minutes. Let's pop into tactics here. Let's ask the keeper to slow the pace down. Let's regroup. Let's take that off. Near post. Kitching tries to get it on target. It's cleared out. They've got a counter opportunity, but White gets back there for the interception right over the top. And another save. Hunter cannot find the goal there. Ugh. Come on. Get to the whistle. We'll take a 2-1 victory. I do not have to dominate every game. Statistically, we're looking good. We're just not putting the goals away at a clip that would make things comfortable, right? That's just how it goes. But that is a big win over Rotherham. That opens up an 11-point advantage and a 21-goal differential. We've almost got them doubled up.
things are looking good in that category. We're 13 points clear of third position. That, so that's automatic promotion. So that's looking good right now. Again, plenty of time for that to fall out of sorts. But we have made it seven in a row. Let's get to the next match, guys. We'll be back in a second. So we're playing Ipswich Town today. This will be my 100th game as manager here at Forest Green. Uh, Vaughn Coble is coming back, but he's not ready to play. Cameron Pring, one of the new guys that we just signed during the transfer window, he was actually out. Uh, so he uh, he's just coming back into training as well. Uh, McGinley is still out with a concussion. He suffered in training uh, right before the uh, last match. We do have some hail going on today. That's uh, that's interesting. Has anybody ever played a game? I've played a game in snow, like deep snow, like you know four or five inches of snow. It's definitely interesting. Um, I'm just not sure uh, that is uh, but hail. You know, when I think of Hale, what was that movie? Um, I think it was The Day After Tomorrow at the beginning, and they show the Japanese guy on his cell phone, and he's out cheating on his wife. I'm assuming, you know, and he's, he's and the hail comes down and, like, hits him on the head and kills him. Um, at least that's what's in, insinuated. I always wonder, has any, has any footballer ever been out playing in Hale and been just clocked? By a piece of hail and just gone down and if if so were they as convincing as Neymar and did they get a card you know did they draw the foul uh, that's what I want to know <laughs> all right we're gonna have Collins up top Gronley moves into the number 10 uh, Williams Morell, White Pills in the midfield Colsus, Jones, Ross, and Shepard across the back O'Malley in goal Jones uh, gets a start uh, Pacalsis, the new uh, main fixture there at left back. And him coming into the side has really thrown things into an up upheaval. So uh, White is having to move around a little bit some. Uh, Morell's in for Pilge because Pilge had to move out left. Uh, McGinley's out. Uh, Jaden Brown has not played much lately. Kai Kennedy is going to the bench when he probably shouldn't be. Actually, you know what? I'd rather you out at wing. Adams. He's got better finishing. I was wondering about putting Adams up there. You know what? Let's put... We've played Hunter up top and Collins in the 10. Let's switch that around and let's play him this way and see if that does anything. Oh, and if we're going to do that, then I can bring Gronley back on as a starter at the right wing. I think that'll be good. I don't like not having Kennedy in there, but it is what it is. Prove a point, please. Let's wait a few minutes before I give the shout. Yeah, still haven't figured this out. Not sure. All right, let's ask him to get creative. We do have a corner. Gronley at near post, and Jones sends that over the bar. That's would have liked a little bit better effort there, especially by someone that is whinging about playing time. Are we off sides? I don't think so. I think they had people on the post, and Farron Rawson picks up his 10th of the season as the center back reaches double-digit goals on the season here in early February. Yeah, he was fine. He had the keeper. He had two or three guys in blue there. Very good job. 1-0 over Ipswich. Ipswich, you remember when we were talking about coming back for this game, I think they were sitting fifth. They were down to seventh in the table. All right, that's flicked on. I, I want to, I'm going to have to watch these, these fullbacks 
that may be something I want to tweak in the tactic because I do have run at defense because we're pretty good at at dribbling and whatnot. But maybe a couple of these guys, like the wingers, we don't want being involved. Oh, nice header down by Pills. Oh, here's Kalsis, your first look at him. And there's a ping from Harvey White. He's got 12. The midfielder also joins the double-digit ranks here over the last few games. Very good buildup. Good way to work the ball into the box. And things are looking good. Yeah, we'll just hold off with the shout moving into the half. I'm okay with that. Pretty dominant performance. Liam Shepard has lost possession. Let's look at... Now, I don't normally deal with this a lot, but let's let's come in here and edit instructions, and let's tell him to dribble less. Just, he loses possession a lot. I have noted that. So let's just do that for him, for him personally. I don't usually go in and do a lot of individual because I start screwing with stuff, and it just scares the living hell out of me. All right, let's tell him to get creative again. See if we can keep him fired up. Again, I am recording ahead, so I look forward to hearing some comments from you guys on maybe how to reset this, but I am... Oh, wait, hold on. Damn it. Maybe... I think there was a penalty there? No? Hold on. There it is. Oh, my God. Yes. Cool. Very good. I am very much happy now. If you go back a couple episodes when I first asked you guys, I went through here, and unless you hit, and it's not even on the line, it's below it. I was not getting that. I was not seeing that sweet spot, was I? Oh, well. All right, let's make a sub. We are about 10 minutes after Rawson. Damn, I don't have a defensive center back. Well, I guess you're not coming off then. Harvey White will pull you off for, let's put, put Galbraith on. Let's go ahead and rest Collins and we'll bring, let's give Matty Stevens a start. And you know what? Let's go ahead, uh, Talbro on the right back. Let's go ahead and rest Shepard over there. So a triple subage in the early going. There's Pilge. Oh, we had two opportunities there. All right, I do want to come in here and let's have the goalkeeper start to slow the pace down. They are on a counter. Fosu loses it. Rawson is tired. We're going to have to sit him. Gronley brings it inside. Crosses it to Pills in the center of the pitch. Oh, there's a good ball, and Gronley can't find the net. Here's Matty Stevens. Okay. Well, he was involved in some action. Three minutes of stoppage time. There's Hunter. Chipped out to Pills. Good first touch. Lays it off. Oh, beautiful one-two pass. And that we earned another corner there, I believe. So a couple of corners down the stretch here. Galbraith. Oh, he took a ping from way out there. Oh, uh, Gronley with the stomp. He picks up a yellow, his fifth of the season. So that's going to be a suspension, I believe, or at least a fine. And I don't know what they're, those guys were doing at Ipswich. But we get the win. Pretty dominant performance. Again, I'd like, you know, 
14 on target. You'd like a couple of goals there, right? Still 11 points clear of Rotherham. Liking that. Appreciate the efforts. Good win for us today. Pilge is stellar. Like his passing, so we'll tell him that. All right, taking another quick look at the squad. There's your goal tallies. Aaron Collins with 23. Hunter and White with 12. Rawson and Pilge with 10 apiece. And I can't tell you the last time I had five goal scorers in double figures. And we're not done. I think Freer could reach 10. And Gronley could possibly reach 10. Kennedy's probably a little far off. And you can see his starts have really fallen off as well uh, since we, you know, he can't be in and we've got so many loan, pe loan people. If we take a look at our loan report, I mean, heck, left back, we're three deep on loan. Central mid, we're four deep. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. So, you know what we need to do? Maybe I've almost got to have Gronley in there, don't I? And it makes sense to start Gronley because Williams can come in on either side. He's, he's maybe better suited as a sub, even though he's quality. He, I mean, but he could play so many spots. You know, he can just be that plug-and-play guy. So, anyway, all right, where do we come back? We are doing well. We're past the transfer window. Uh, Colchester, Coventry... Crew, I think we're going to come back. Uh, let's come back the end of March for Rockdale and Crew. We'll do that, and then that probably puts us in line for a Portsmouth Millwall stretch run. And honestly, outside of Crew, we've got a pretty easy run in. So if we make it to that point in good position. Don't want to guarantee anything because you know what the FM gods do. But if we can get to that point, I think we're going to be sitting really good for promotion into next season. Uh, if we also take a look, we're bringing in uh, right at 5,000 people. 5,012. That looks like, uh, and I, be I bet, I bet that's a sellout. 5,012 in normal capacity. Uh, you know what? I wonder. They're going to say no. They're going to say no, but I want to ask to expand the ground. Ooh, hello. We want to improve our worldwide reputation, and this would help us. That's excellent. Can I get you to spend any more money? Can we... Can we improve our youth facilities? Uh, you don't want to do that. What about... Uh, no. Okay, well, hey, you know, whatever. So let's see. What is the ground? 2.4 million should be completed by October 20th of this year. So it'll start at the end of the season. We might have, so we might have a little bit, I don't know if that'll affect seating in the early days, but the first two months of the season will will be without, uh, you know, without those seats. But that's still good. That's still good. And that's going to be 7,300. That's 2,300 more. I mean, that's 50% additional capacity. That's going to equate to, probably quite a lot of money on ticket revenue that'll be nice so looking forward to that next year especially if we go up and we're in league one yeah don't we yes we go up to the championship if we get promoted qpr blackpool and oxford looking to go down currently derby couldn't happen to a nicer team if they went down uh huddersfield again couldn't happen to a nicer team <laughs> I'm very familiar with most of these clubs in the championship, and there's a lot of them I don't like anymore. Um, 
surprised holes that high. Of course, this isn't real life. I understand. Uh, but anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button. Also, hit the notification bell so you uh, get up, you know, email notifications when I upload a new video. And please think about subscribing if you haven't. That's the only way I ask you guys to support my channel is to do that, like videos, and comment. So if you like what you're seeing, hit me up in the comments below. I'm still small enough that I take time to answer every single one of you guys, um, unless it's advertising porn sites. I just block those. Um, I guess that's, I have grown to the point where I'm getting the porn, porn comments on my website, uh, on my channel. So I do delete those, but you know, I guess that's interesting. Now it's, you know, now it's to get big enough that I start getting trolls that come in and start like giving me unlikes on my videos. I guess that's the next stage of uh, a YouTube channel development. I don't know. We'll find out one day, maybe. Guys, thanks so much. We'll see you. Take care. Bye.